Welcome back, everyone, to the European LCS, where we just saw another decisive win for Millennium. Guys, uh, let's talk about picks and bans. Three mid lane bans coming out of Millennium, Yasuo, LeBlanc, and Lulu, and a cast of the man from the Super Hot crew. What was kind of the intention of both teams? So for me, I want to talk about it from Millennium's side because they would not really played Cassidy. Even when he was open for them last year, they were a team that constantly banned out Cassidy. Now for me, maybe you'd say you don't want to risk the Cassidy going through, but I'd say that this Ziggs as Kerp obviously just proved in that game is a more dangerous champion to let through than Cassidy. Especially also because Selfie in the mid lane on Twisted Fate clearly showed he didn't know how to lane against against the Zex here. I mean, the, the first one he gives up where he goes in aggressive after already both summoners been forced away. Easy kill for Kerb, just flash ignites him, he's dead. And every time he tried to teleport to gank a lane, he didn't do it safely enough. So Kerb would always just walk up to him, throw down his W, interrupt him, twice in a row actually early game. Like TF is all about the early ganks from him here and it didn't work for him because he didn't think about playing against the Zix. So Kerb completely outplayed him. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Kerp in just a second. I kind of want to focus on the early game trends here we've seen after four games on patch 4.7. Deficio, is there anything that went against what you expected? Well, when it comes to early game now, as we've been talking about, talking about through the day, it's harder to do late invades. You can't really sneak into the enemy jungle because everyone can get enough vision down so they can spot you out. It obviously means or it could mean there should be more fights because people just go five people in and start a fight or something. But it actually means people are just staying back now, being more defensive. We saw Millennium in this game with the blue trinket at level one to spot it. I see, was there anyone in the bush here from, uh, from Super Hardcore? Anyone we could catch out of position? Nope. Go back to the base, sell a blue trinket, buy a normal trinket, and, and return back to the lane at like 150, 155. So it's, we've seen a few different level ones, but nobody, nothing really stood out. Yeah. Very interesting all across the board. Um, you were talking obviously about selfie and a lot of that is related to pressure or non-pressure that Impaler was able to put on this game. What are general impressions of him? Because Lee Sin doesn't seem to be working. Well, for me it was a little bit weird how that whole second kill went down. He was stood on a pink ward for five or six seconds before he seemed to realize it was actually on top of a pink ward there. Then he killed it and whilst he was killing it, Evelyn comes in and they killed Selfie and Impaler didn't really do anything to help him out. It was just a very weird move. I'm not sure whether Impaler was talking at that point and wasn't really focused on actually looking at what was happening in the mid lane, but you can expect that a team, I mean, Selfie's still pretty new to this team as well. I think their synergy is still very much lacking in some parts. Sadly though, excuses when it comes to synergy won't help you anything. And actually they played together for what? one and a half month now or something, they need to have everything sorted by now if they want to have a chance of getting towards playoffs, getting towards the World Championships. Because a team like Super Hot Crew, they don't get many chances. I mean, if you lose to Millennium two or three times during the season, and Millennium, let's say, they end up being one of the bottom teams anyhow, we're not sure, they're playing really well now. But then Super Hot Crew pretty much lose the chance of going towards the playoffs or the World Championships. So they need to win these games. And then to win games, you don't take your jungler and move him in the bottom lane to gank four or five times when the matchups are support is Thresh for the enemy team, your support is Leona. It is very hard for you pre-level six to engage onto Thresh because he can flay you away so he can stop you from getting towards him to lock down a target. He can do the same thing with Lee Sin. If he queues towards him, he can flay him, stop him in the air. So it's a very hard lane to gank before level six on Leona. And yet they kept going down there again and again with Impaler. They got absolutely nothing from it. I think the one time they actually got a kill it got turned around by Millennium, and they got two or three kills, took the tower as well. So Super Hard Crew's game plan was to gank the bottom lane, but then you need to pick different, or at least you need to adjust to what, our, what the other team got. Yeah, and on Millennium, we actually saw the complete opposite. Not only did they get a lot of jungle pressure down, individually they were all doing very well, especially for me in this game. Kerp, who I dare to say maybe I've never seen Kerp play this strong of a game. I think he had a lot of freedom. In the mid lane. I think he had a <laughs> okay. I think he had a lot of freedom to be honest. Like the the two early kills that he got allowed him so much extra time just to chill. We saw him kill, uh, killing off a blue buff with his ultimate. Of course, the Baron at the end, which I think we're going to go into a little bit later on. But he had free roam and he got himself going a lot faster than he should have been allowed to. And again, it was all about honestly how badly Super Hot Crew played overall that game around the mid lane. Yeah, um, just another example of his, what would you say, like pretty much a free game on Zix. We have a replay actually of his quarter kill. If you just pull it up 
on your guys' screen at home. What we notice here is when you have a big AOE ultimate from Zix here, his bomb, and the enemy team decides to group up in the middle of this bomb here, you <laughs> set up a perfect team fight for him. It's actually super hot crew though, who's setting up here a bit of a trap towards towards uh, towards Millennium and trying to turn things around and maybe get a fast kill on to, to, to Twitch. But if we roll the clip now, we can see it goes kind of different. Yes, they do manage to kill a Kraton. Then Gage comes in here. Then notice Kirby and notice his ultimate. How many members are stuck here in the middle? His ultimate hits three members here. Everyone drops very low from it. And he's just now in the back line. One guy is dead. Early outlast, actually even too late of an outlast coming in from Selfie. And now Kirby with his Garden Angel. Kevin is, I mean, Mimer is not going to kill him, and Paler wasn't going to kill him, so he's just getting free time now to just poke away again and again and again. Real Fela is the guy left to kill up with Mr. Riles, who's still very high in HP, but because Kirk can still do a lot of damage to him, and because Kevin was on full HP, they could win the fight. Yeah, I mean, he was massively far, far away ahead of that one as well. In fact, for you guys that have Kirk in your team, I'm a little bit jealous uh, when it comes <laughs> to fantasy. 43.07 points he got in that game. It's pretty much more than I've got all day. Yeah, well, seem <laughs> which uh, I'm says playing a lot against, about your team. I'm playing against you. I'm mostly North American players, so we'll have to wait yeah. on that one. <laughs> very good for the guys that have Kerp in their team. Thank you very much, guys. For now, we're going to head back over to Demon and Quickshot for our next game. Thank you very much, Shox and guys. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the European Summer LCS split. The race for the World Championships continues, and now it is time for Rocket to face off against Gambit Gaming. But before we head into the Rocket, uh, head into it, Rocket enters this match confident in because their past record over the Russians has phenomenal. But let's not forget. While they feel Alexic's replacement, Nick, might make them an easy opponent, Gambit is optimistic about the new energy he brings to the team. Jokot is a team without any like superstar player. They're like a team who stuck together and do their work. They like try to win as a team. Jokot are usually playing their own game, their own meta, the champions which they think are better in team play. We always been beating Gambit, we didn't have like much trouble versus them and now they are weaker in my opinion, so maybe it will be even easier for us. It's hard to say about uh, Rockard's gameplay right now. I think it, who win it depends uh, who win lanes. I don't know about NIQ, but I think he's much worse than Alex Ish. Uh, he's from Poland, I know this guy. I think they lost some team play, I guess, because I think Alex was like one of the main guys who had voice in the game. I feel very confident in middle line right now. I play a lot and a lot versus good players and I do actually very well as far as I think of. I used to play with Nico back in Acer and in H2K and I think he's a really special guy because he treats this game as serious as he can. He try hard every time. For some reason I feel a bit more confident with Nick because something changed in our team, like mentality or something. We just play more try hard or something. At least in the beginning, in the first weeks, it will make Gambit weaker, but later, who knows? Of course, that is the big story in this game. Nick in uh, Overpower mentioned he knows him very well. It's going to be interesting to see how they work out in that mid lane. Yeah, I just want to see how much fluff uh, Edward is talking when he says the whole team, <laughs> the mentality is different. You know, we've heard some good things about scrims, we've heard some good things about the online performance of the team, but this is where it matters. We'll see if they deliver. Well, Rockout had a solid first spring split, finishing fourth in the league and, of course, third in the playoffs. Better still, their head-to-head -head against Gambit, where they ended up a whopping 5-1 overall. Earlier today, Rockout looked shaky against Millennium, though. They fell really far behind after giving up kills, towers, dragons. Generally, just felt like they were not really in the game. I completely agree. And this is a very stark contrast from how strong Rockout looked at the beginning of the spring split. I mean, after falling over 7,000 gold behind at the 20 minute mark, Rocket gave up an inhibitor turret which opened up the map for Millennium to exploit further. I think in particular Jankos, he really, really struggled earlier today. It felt like every time he tried to gank Millennium, Millennium just had uh, anticipated him. They read him like a book and they counted him flawlessly. For the team that finished third place in the playoffs during the spring split, to get destroyed by Millennium is a worrying start to the split that determines who goes to Worlds, you know? So we need to see if Rocket can shake off the loss and look for a better pick and ban phase and perform better, especially during the laning phase, 
because earlier today it simply wasn't it wasn't going to cut it. Well, as we mentioned, Gambit had to deal with the shock departure of Alex Itch during the break. Alex started the team back in 2011 when they were Team Empire, and then of course moved on to Moscow Five, where they created history. How are they going to deal with the loss? Is the big question here on everybody's lips. Right now, their replacement for week one is Nick, who effectively being on trial in front of everyone watching. Yeah, so Alex Itch really was the core of Gambit. When he was in control of his lane, it allowed him to control the whole game. And this often led to Gambit victories. You can't say the same for the rest of Gambit's lanes, though. I think that's a fact. It was the reliance on the individual ability of players like uh, uh, Diamond, players like Alex, that was the core to victories for Gambit. And the game has evolved past the solo lane style of play, with competitive league focusing more on movements across the map and trading objectives effectively. So we need to see if Gambit have evolved as a team with the new mid laner Nick, who is on your screen right now. He does main a set of champions which rely more heavily on team-based play. So examples include Twisted Fate, Ziggs, Lulu. His Nidalee is particularly impressive. 15-1-28 in three games. So we'll see if the player swap gives, uh, gives us more answers to our questions. How will Nick communicate with the rest of this squad? Has the team learned to play the map and not simply see hero, kill hero? Who will be the game-winning carry for Gambit? Has Genja stepped up? And like you've already pointed out, D-Man, Rocket's got a 5-1 record against Gambit. Gambit will need to perform better than they have all year with a new mid laner to beat Rocket. And more importantly, will the man on the screen there, Darian, quizzically working his new facial beard hair OP. and moustache. All of the videos you've seen today, these pro players, they, they've got some, some good beards and yeah, moustaches going it's on. It's beautiful. The swag just gets stronger and stronger. Let's check out those starting lineups, though. Over on the blue side, it is a gambit game, and that means, of course, Darian is in the top lane, Diamond in the jungle, Nick the new man in mid, Genja as AD carry, and Edward on support. And on the red side, it is Rockat, Zazus up top, Jankus in the jungle, Overpower in the mid lane, Salivar and Vanda as the AD carry and support. And for our featured matchup, we are going to take a close look at the two junglers this time around. Gambit's Diamond, and of course, Rockets is Yankos, who himself has a very no sporty beard himself, a chin strap that Freak would be proud of. Of course, these junglers are eerily similar when we look at the stats. Both of them very instrumental in getting their team going in the early game. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, Diamond and Jankos are super similar, as you've already said, both KDA as well as GPM. And very interestingly, they give up an overwhelming majority of their deaths in their team's losses. So to give you the numbers, Diamond has died 65 deaths in 26 games. 50 of those deaths took part in their 13 losses. Jankos is very similar. 61 deaths across 28 games, and he's given up 45 of those in their 13 losses. What it tells you, when both of these teams are losing, it's the junglers that look to create opportunities and create plays. A prime example is Jankos going 0-5-1 earlier today. Mm. They were struggling against Millennium, and Jankos is like, you know what? I can make something happen. No, not this time. I'll, this time. No, not that time. Well, three more times it happens, and he goes 0-5-1 in his very first game. Well, we'll see how it works out for them. Picks and bands are going to be getting underway in just a few moments. Of course, we saw Rockat earlier on kind of giving Millennium everything they want. They're surely going to have to check out that phase. They need to change their pick and ban phase. I would say out. jungle bans against Diamond or mid lane bans against Nick. That would be my approach to this game. If I were in Rockat's shoes, we're about to find out what they decide. Upset the new guy. I think that's way may we be the way they are going to go. Here we go. Picks and bans underway. Elise taken away and Cassidy being locked out by Rockat. Thresh also being removed. They're not going to let Vandalife have that one through. There's the Jax ban as well. Coming thick and fast. These few games, of course, at the start of the LCS is kind of what we expect. They do a lot of research coming into these opening matches. Yeah, you, you know, because you've got so many weeks to prepare for it, you can anticipate your opponents as scrims going on, etc. I still want to highlight the fact I don't like a Cassidy first ban on red side. You have time to get rid of it. See if you can bait it out from your opponents. See if you can get rid of it. Regardless, Rocket opt not to do it this time round. And I'm interested to see what their final ban will be, if it will be something like an Evelyn against Diamond, if, if that's even something that will be first pick worthy for Gambit. I'm not sure because they've got a new player. As Edward has said, there's a, a newfound energy. We'll see what they prioritize uh, going into their first pick. Cassidy and Twitch, the final bans coming out from both teams. So we're not going to see that Twitch through, which is interesting. Is it going to be an insta-lock Lee Sin for Diamond? Yes, it is. Is the king back? We will find out in 30 to 45 minutes. He's most likely going to do better than Jankos did previously. I mean, unfortunately, Jankos' Lee Sin from earlier today was very uninspiring. Um, I do think you have to give some credit to Millennium for reading him well. 
Rockad have a 5-1 record against Gambit. If they can predict where Diamond will go on this Lee Sin, then we could see a similar situation where Rocket can counter gank. Because as you said, Evelyn is up and Yankos has used Evelyn to great effect in the past if they want to go that route. Judging by Rocket, they've also seen the stats. They've been looking at the screens and thinking, you know what, don't think we can actually let Lily through for Nick. Should we lock this one in? A lot of conversation going on over this one. We'll see whether it's going to get switched around. It is going to be Yankos falling back to Evelyn, it seems. We saw Zazas on Rise earlier on. Not a great success, that's for sure. And you haven't locked them in just yet, but I'm expecting these to be the final champion choices. So there's a big risk with this Rise lock-in. Uh, oh, going to swap away. Now, what I like about Rocket swapping to something like a Lucian, they can counter-pick their opponent's solo lanes, which is going to be a smart call. You've got Seleva on a massively, massively preferred AD carry. Ten games on Lucian. He's played 10 games in Caitlyn as well during the Spring Split, so a lot of experience on this AD. And you're obviously denying it from Genja as well. Genja has trained more towards the Jinx, though. The reason I like not, uh, Ryze not getting picked in, if Gambit had gone for another early game, strong laning champion against Ryze, Rocket would have been in the same position. Get smashed early, have no items to contest your opponents, and just have very little to work with. So I'd like to see Rocket counter-picking, ideally with a better mix of early, mid, and late. Gambit go with... Gragas, there's an interesting one. Gone through a bunch of changes through the last few patches. We haven't really seen him since about 4.5, I don't feel. Caitlyn would be a old tried and tested for Genjo, and it has been locked in along with the Gragas. So the Gragas support is where we're expecting this champion to go. I want to touch on two things. One, uh, he has been changed somewhat significantly over the, the, the rework from 4.6 and now obviously some tweaks in 4.7. He's not going to be insta-gibbing everybody. He does have a slow, does have knockbacks, etc. Uh, some damage reduction and, and things like that. But what I am interested in is it's comboed with Caitlyn. So the very good range that they're going to offer with barrels, Piltover Peacemakers and Yordle Snap Traps should give them the tools to zone out their opponents in lane very effectively, assuming they're on the same page. Also, Genja has been trending towards Caitlyn a very large amount over the course of the end of the Spring Split and playoffs. It was a champion we didn't see him touch for over a year, up until, you know, two months ago. And now all of a sudden Genja's playing in his first game in the Summer Split. We'll see if he can make it work. Let's see how he builds as well. Rockat looking towards their they're going to lock in Aatrox here now. That is going to be a top lane Aatrox, which is an interesting one for Zaz, of course, played at Rise earlier on, and it will, of course, be Leona as support. So what I do like, we talked about how we need to get a, a decent mixture. Aatrox does pretty well with a couple of levels under his, under his belt, and he will scale quite effectively to become quite a strong split pusher. So whoever Gambit decides to put in the top lane against him, may have a tough time, depending on the champion they want to lock in. Rocket also has strong initiation. With Eve coming from the side for a flank, you can have Aatrox just throwing himself in there with that Dark Flight and combo all of that with a Solar Flare, and you have a very, very strong initiation on the assumption they hit those skill shots. So if Gambit get caught out of position, they may be in trouble. The only risk is, if they all stack up on the same area, one explosive cask from Edward's Gragas is going to just disperse them all and reset all of those abilities. So there is a lot of imp uh, importance on dealing with that Gragas or picking a right fight in the right area. We're going to see an Aurelia once again. This time it will be Darian running it in the top lane. There is the Nidley lock-in for Nick in that mid lane. We saw the incredible stats. 15-128, I believe it was. Three games. Throughout, of course, the challenger. We'll see how he does here in the LCS. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see what Overpower decides to play. We've seen him play Assassins in the past. LeBlanc is up and available if he wants to try and, you know, shut Nidalee down in lane, uh, down in lane, and maybe get aggressive with some assistance from Jankos. He could go a different route. I mean, we've seen Overpower play the likes of Mordekaiser, play Pantheon. I don't know if they're going to pull that out right now. But you never know with Rocket. They are one of the teams that does throw those odd balls out. Uh, we'll see where he decides to go with them. I mean, Ziggs is still up as well. Another overpass signature champion. You could just have a farm fest between the two of them in that mid lane. Considering the fair amount of AoE that's already with Rocket, I think Ziggs may be the, the possible choice. Ten seconds left. We'll see what they decide. A lot of discussions this time around. And we've heard so many times from Rocket that overpower picks what the hell he likes. <laughs> um, this time around, it seems like he's having an actual discussion with the team. It is going to be a team comp build. That is why we see Twisted Fate being pulled out for a second time in two games running. This time around, it will be Overpower, of course. The champion we've seen him on, I think, once in the Spring Split, if memory serves correct. I'm trying to think back. 
Yeah, not not often. Uh, we didn't see him often at all. With the changes to both heal and exhaust, he, he has come into a little bit more uh, pro, you know, fame, so to speak. Also, assassins have fallen out. So with the comps locked in, Gambit have got somewhat more of a poke siege style comp. They want to get under a tower, use barrels, spears, traps, and, and pilt over peacemakers to get you poked down and get the towers down. I'm expecting Gambit to play a fast rotation, tower pushing game. Over on the side of Rocket, you have a little bit more focus on those team fights, but you do have elements of split push in there. Aatrox can do well if he goes Blade of the Ruined King or if he goes uh, Ravenous Hydra. Twisted Fate can be in a similar position as well. What I do like about them is they have the tools to create fights more easily than Gambit does. So I feel like Gambit's gone for a map slash tower comp, and I think Rocket may be looking a little more for engages, maybe split push. Well, as the match gets underway, let's total up the votes and see which team you pick to win. According to LRAleagueSports.com, you like Gambit by 55%. Wow. Still pretty close. That is very close. For a team like Gambit, with the following that Gambit has, I would not have anticipated that vote to be so close. What it does tell you is public sentiment is not with him considering Alex has departed. It's the superstar. I mean, he was the, the face, the name, uh, the front man. I do like the, the team composition that Gamma's put together for this match, and I'm really interested to see if they can execute it. They did it once last year against Rocket with the Nidalee and the rotations. Can they do it again? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game five underway. Gamut Gaming as the blue team without Alex Itch up against Rocket as the red team. And of course, a couple of things to take note of here. A few little tweaks. We did see Overpower switch in last minute to Ghost instead of Ignite. He did have that on for a while, but Cleanse has been picked up by Nick. There is a fair amount of CC. I mean, gold cards, Leona, Evelyn Slow, etc. So it's just going to be the, the, the smart play. It also allows Nick to swap to Cougar form and get away from any sort of siege potential. First engage, Edward's going to catch a gold card. And that's it. Luckily, he got into that bush just in time. That was the most anticlimactic level one. Indeed, Genja actually going to get a poke here. Straight face checking in towards Sullivan. Now he's going to have to back out. You can see Overpower coming around the side. Gold card ready and waiting. Genja's in all sorts of trouble. Stun card goes in. He's already had to use the heal. He's going to try and get away with this one. 90 caliber net had to be leveled up and used. But he does get away. Yankos now, he's caught out by Diamond. I retract the statement. Very exciting level one. So look at some of the spells traded. Flash and heal from Genja in reply to a ghost and flash from Overpow. So, uh, as well as a flash from Zazus. So, Rocket now have two lanes that are gankable, considering Diamond is on Lee Sin, which is a very, very strong early game ganker. If Zazus and Overpower do not play the next three to five minutes correctly, they run the risk of giving up first blood. The Genius same can be strong. said of Genja on Caitlyn. Assuming Yankos can get in behind him or, uh, uh, you know, get in the 2v1 situation correctly, maybe they can get kills. So these next few minutes, we'll see who can take advantage of their opponent and summon spells being down. So full information given. They know that Rock are going to be starting off at the red buff. Zazas was stood there, but he is going to back away. However, it will show Yankos in a moment starting off there. Blue buff start for Diamond, and that means they're not going to be able to counter each other. It's going to be standard starts for both these teams. Standard top lanes, standard jungle, no counter invades. And standard bottom lane. So, immediately we have the interesting prospect down this bottom lane, of course, of Gragas support by Eddie. Both supports are melee. Both supports are uh, going to be looking to get in the faces of their opponents. The difference is, because of the CC that Leona's going to have with uh, her Zenith Blade and the Shield of Daybreak, I feel that the kill potential is higher with Rocket until level 6. Once Edward does get the burst of that explosive cask, and if they get some poke down, I think the Caitlyn and Gragas combo will work out, but this is the first time we've seen support Gragas here in the summer split of the LCS. We'll see how Eddie does it. A lot of aggression early on in this top lane. Darian putting pressure on towards Zazas and forcing Zazas to pounce away. Has it level two first? Darian now at level two. Will found that. Lifesteal, I believe, he would have just leveled yeah. up there. Let's we'll first blood price. He just got it level two. Instead, he's going to get poked out again. Slowed down, Zazas. Not locked up by Darien yet, though. I actually think, in the grand scheme of things, Zazas should be able to outplay this matchup because his sustain doesn't require mana. We move to the bottom lane. Genja's caught. Genja's caught out. He's got nothing to escape this time around. A good belly slam straight away from Edward there. Just try and keep up. Genja's in trouble. He's going to go down. First blood is given across the Yankos. That was a good attempt by Edward to interrupt them. That body slam just instantly knocking two members of Rocket away. Unfortunately, Genja had already used his 90 caliber net, didn't have flash, 
the red buff from Jankos had been applied. So he just got run down. And that all stems from level one. That all stems from Genja walking solo into the river bush. There was very little that could be gained from that one. And he ended up running the rest. Diamond's trying to counter uh, jungle. He may be in trouble. Look for Selim and Vanda to respond. Can they catch him? This is the question. Jankos is going to give chase. We do see Overpower making his way down. Vanda's coming up as well. Oh. Where's Diamond going to go? He's got no wards to try and get away from. He's going to get locked up. Zenith played in there. He goes down. Overpower gets his kill and a double buff. Strong start by Rocket. They get themselves, uh, you know, two very early kills because of Gambit misplays. Genja misplayed his level one, gave up his summoners, got killed. Diamond, maybe overconfident, maybe expected Jankos to recall and not go back to uh, his jungle to farm. It means that he gives up a kill, and as you've highlighted, overpowered double buffs is going to make Nick's life a living hell. For the new man for Gambit to have to deal with overpower with red and blue buffs this early on, it is an incredibly difficult situation to be. Yeah, one of his, I think, old teammates, if memory serves correct, between Nick and overpower. Team Acer, about two years ago. Two, two so years ago, back in, uh, uh, not going to be to Warsaw. Correct. In ECC Poland, he was, I believe. Yes. Going on way back there. However, Nick. In trouble, of course, he's going to take a lot of damage, as you mentioned. Not something you want to go up against. A double buffed up in lane. It's probably the worst thing that could happen for Nick. However, top lane, that's been going back and forward a fair bit. Lone 3 CS currently by Darian, taking a, building up a hefty advantage over Zazas early on. We'll see if Zazas can farm his way up. He does have a few minions in front of him. And I think Zazas has been playing somewhat more cautiously because he doesn't have Flash. You know, you need to keep this in mind. Every time Darian jumps into Zazas' face, Zazas has to keep in mind that he doesn't have that summoner spell to fall back on. But there's a bunch of minions, so the gap is not going to be that close. And as I was mentioning earlier, if Darian wants to get aggressive and jump in Zazas' uh, you know, grill to, to, to try and poke him down, he's got to use his mana. So the more aggressive Darian plays against Zazas, the more likely he is to run out of mana, lose that resource, and give up control. So uh, a lot of focus and, and decision-making needs to come down from uh, him in the top lane. What we are noticing in the bottom lane is just the zone control that both Genji and Edward are, are doing. They're using the range of the champions just exquisitely. Yeah, Edward getting their barrel pokes on towards Sullivan every single time. You can see he's very low on health now. Has both summoner spells available though. And of course, not far off level five, so he'll be poking a little bit of hit points up there. Piltover not landing this time around, but look at the jungle you can see. Jankos is going to try and sneak around the back. Seleva is so low. There's no red buff from Jankos yet. Flash is available for Genja, so this is going to be a stun from Vanda. If you can get it, there'll be a kill on oh, the trap. Just cancels that possibility. Making sure he doesn't get caught out. Jankos instead will take a fair chunk of poke from Genja. Nick, meanwhile, in the mid lane, still up against this double buff. Tries to pounce in, hence level six, and just to keep that wave clear for now. And honestly, has done a pretty good job up to now. Only 10 CS difference between him and Overpower. Double boss finally wearing off on Overpower. Yeah, so Nick's going to have a tiny respite, but he's out of mana. So he's in a difficult position already. But you see Nick is getting support to Diamond. And bottom lane, again, it's just a lot of action all over. I want to highlight that uh, Zazus has used his ultimate. So we can assume he was pushing Darian down. Darian just used his ultimate himself. So a lot of aggression in all of the lanes, but nothing has uh, come of it just yet. Yeah, of course, Zazus could dive quite happily onto the tower. Has got that uh, passive available. It does force Darian away from the turret. So that's going to even itself up in the top lane. Overpower continues to push. He's going to go back upfield. Yep, 64 CS. Chunk of gold on him. We do see Sullivan. He's returned. He's got himself the Vampiric Scepter. The was Doran's blade as well. So he's looking to try and go aggressive. Genja in the meantime, just working out. Darian teleporting back up to top, keeping the CS advantage in his favor. But only just. Yeah, and from the previous trade, he was the first one to back off. So I'm going to assume that this made the fight. Edward's in trouble now. He's got a lot of damage on towards him. As I mentioned, Sullivan was looking to try and get a little bit hungry there already. Taking a bit more damage than he intended. Nick returning back to the mid lane, building it towards Athens and Holy Grail. Overpower himself goes for the Source Boots early on, as well as that Chalice. Yeah, you know, if you look at the way the the lanes have played out so far, Rocket have simply gotten their advantages because of the correct play from Jankos. And the reason I highlight it is just how it was the exact opposite earlier in the day. So Jankos has actually shaken off the loss against Millennium. He's got his head in the right place, and he's made the right calls this game. Rocket are about 2,000, just shy of 2,000 gold ahead of Gambit. They've made no attempt for either the Dragon or Towers. And I think they're just going to keep this laning phase going. A decent advantage in the mid lane. I think Zazus has already started to push Darian back, so I'm expecting Aatrox to be more difficult for Darian to deal with. 
And we'll see if Selva can catch up. He's still a tiny bit of CF5. Yeah, Darien just backed and bought once again, actually. So just got himself a couple more items to help keep that health thing up there. You can see the Ruby Gem being picked up. Doran's shield was picked up a long time ago. Now he's gone for the long sword. So Phage will be picked up very soon. Genja getting locked up once again. But another belly slam onto Vanda. Genja taking a lot of punishment here. He's going to get caught out. The explosive cast was pulled out. Vanda taking a burst of damage. Darian, uh, Diamond, sorry, will get spotted out by their ward. And that means that... Yankos is now called to duty. Yeah, and he's going to be there in the right time. Uh, Vanda's very close to getting level 6. With a Solar Flare and Agony's Embrace, they may actually be able to tower dive if Gambit stick around. We noticed that uh, it looks like Edward is recall, uh, recalling right now. So Diamond is going to have to do double duty on the defense. I don't know how confident Rocket are feeling. It would be, it would be a risky dive, so we're probably going to play this one a little safe. And overall, Rocket just getting themselves in a good position. I talked about how I expected uh, Gamma to maybe play a tower game. They haven't done that. They didn't go for the 2v1. They didn't go for Siege, and there's the dive. Diamond's the one they're going to focus on. Can safeguard across and will get away free. And now they're running all sorts of trouble. Yankos actually taking some damage from Genja. They have done enough to bully him out, but look at Vanda. Very close to going down the turret there. Very confident dive. Um, it does turn out Rocket were brave enough to, pull, to, to go for it, but they didn't make it stick. So unfortunately, no kill, and they also do not get the tower. I don't think they'll be too unhappy with that, because they are doing pretty well in this laning phase. Uh, brave, brave dragon. Explosive cost is not up. Middle East Spears could hurt if they come down. Edward's going to reveal this. So let's see what Overpower roams. Once he comes to join the party, that's when things are going to get a bit more serious. Explosive Cask is not available, but Ignite is up for Eddie, and we know he's not shy of going for a kill. And that does force Rocket away. Yankos taking far too much damage from the Dragon. Yeah, really. He's good. going for it. Oh, Edward. Oh, he oh, finds the barrel. barrel on Yankos. Now he realizes it, but he didn't follow through. He's no. got Flash and Ignite available. He's going to go into towards Yankos. Is he going to try and back away from this one? Eddie is not normally one to back out of a fight, but this time he will. And buys time for Gambit to sneak in and take themselves the Dragon. If Rocket just with a little bit of a half-hearted attempt. They didn't really fully commit to Dragon. And the moment Gragas got up there, I don't think they had the timer on the explosive cost, which is why they didn't go further. We'll carry on with that in a second. Destiny is available. Let's see if Overpower uses it for the gank or if they're just going to get the tower. Looks like they just want the tower right now. Took the middle turret, of course. It does mean that Gambit actually tried to push the bottom, but they didn't take it down. So that's going to be two to zero in turrets for Rocket. It does give him a fairly hefty gold advantage. Nick did maybe sneak up there to try and help out Darien, something Darien's not had for a very long time. A lot of assistance in that top lane. But you can see Salavak got himself back down that bottom lane. Gone for boots very early on here. Berserker Greaves. It's a different uh, itemization build. You know, uh, Genja's going for your more standard sort of BF sword uh, boots. We'll probably see him getting the likes of a Bloodthirster. Salava, we'll see how he does. I mean, he's got a, a very big disparity when it comes to attack damage. Genja's sitting at 143, Salava at 109. So unless he gets assistance from Yankos and all of the bonus damage from Leona and, and Leona's passive, those sunlight props, I think it's going to be a difficult trade to With that BF sword on, Salva's got to be really careful. Eddie has his explosive cask available. He has Ignite ready. Genja will put a lot of damage down. They're actually going to dive in towards him again. Belly slam caught on. Vanda now taking all that damage. That shield will try and cover it off. Salva takes a bit of burst, has to back away as well. This is a close trade between these bottom laners and the junglers are about to get involved. It is. Genja does not have heal available for the upcoming fight we see. Selva does. I think this is going to turn into a big one. Junglers are both available. They've caught Genja. They're going in towards him. And look at that. Diamond straight away in there. Vanna gets punted to the side. Genja backing away. Destiny called in. Here comes Overpower. Comes straight in. Wildcard's flung out there. This could be three in one. It will be Darien teleporting in. But it's at the death of himself. And would you believe... Just like that, it's a four for zero to Rocket. Rocket pulled that off flawlessly. The teleport from Zazas just came in earlier than that of Darien, so they end up getting to better positioning. They get multiple kills, and because Overpower has Destiny, uh, Nick had not roamed or had no idea that was coming, didn't interrupt it. Rocket just gets a slew of kills. The one thing that is so unfortunate for Gambit, that is a two-man stun for the Solar Flare. Only Eddie I believe was just unaffected by the stun, and it just clean up through Rocket. Look at the HP loss. Only overpower was at about 50, you know, 50 odd percent HP. The rest of them completely finished. The ideal target tanking is hurt with Zazus and just another great call from Rockat in the second game. So early worries for Gambit fans out there. They weren't sure how this was going to work out, and nor were we, honestly. We weren't sure. We've been obviously talking to the players. Edward seemed very confident about how the bottom lane pairing 
would work between himself and Genja, but at 0 2 0 and 0 1 0 up against a 1 0 4 and 0 0 5. It is absolutely not going well in that bottom lane. Mid lane, look at this. It's only a 10 CS difference, but Nick, of course, had early trouble worries, mainly for the fact that Diamond gifted the double buff across to Overpower. I have to question Gambit's decision to not go for a lane swap or not go for a, a fast push style of, of, of team play. If they had, I mean, you see how effective Genji and Edward were in the laning phase of pushing Sullivan Bando away. They had a CS advantage, they had Sullivan low HP often. If they had used those tools, and try to rush down a tower, you know, get Diamond up there in a 3v1 situation, maybe. All of a sudden, Gambit could have roamed and rotated. If you go back to week 10, week 9, week 10 of the spring split, Gambit were blue side, Rocket was red side, Alex was playing Nidalee. And they did that, they roamed, they rotated. It, I actually think it was the first time we've seen Genji and Caitlyn. And Gambit focused towers on a kill to work in his favor. Yank oh. starting a fight, here comes Vander as well. Yankos going in, Diamond's going to be the focus. He's got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He gets caught out, Yankos gets bounced in towards him, but he actually fancies this one. He's going to keep on chasing. There comes the Destiny, coming in towards it. Nick Wellham's going to get Talk out. He gets taken down the side there. Edward gets focused on as well. He manages to drop, and now Nick runs for his life, throws out the spears, but it's another two for zero to Rocket. Rocket's response is just superior. Rocket have the tools and the positioning to start those fights. And, you know, they catch Diamond out a little bit in the river, land the gold card, land the solar flare, and they get some kills. And now it's going to open up, uh, you know, more, more of the map. Look at the positioning. I mean, this is a, a three on three, and so unfortunate for Edward, it actually knocks Yankos with the red buff in range of X. That explosive cast helped Evelyn, who is melee, who wants to be in your face. I think it it does scream a little bit of inexperience on that Gragas at this level of play, not maybe evaluating where to put that barrel. It could also just be that Yankos got one step to the left and, and, and you know, got knocked the right way. But as it stands, Rocket now in the same position they were in earlier against Millennium, except in the lead instead of behind. You know, you've got to wonder these days, the fear factor that Gambit used to hold over teams is no longer there. They how pure confidence now Rocket, of course, up against them. 5-1 in the spring split. Why not? You know, they had the had the number of Gambit, and it seems once again they have complete dominance. 6,000 gold lead, 16 minutes into the game. It's big. I really want to comment on that line, the fear factor that Gambit held over teams. Uh, Rocket didn't have it. Darren but should pick a fight. He's knocked up Darren. Well, he's going to maybe take down the blood well, but should be going to pounce away. Or the fact that he just used the dive, it's going to be a death, and he finally, finally gets a kill. It is Diamond that takes it. Yeah, Zazus maybe just overconfident there. Uh, Darren picked the fight with Zazus. He didn't pick a fight with himself. Uh, but yeah, on the topic of the, the fear factor, Rocket themselves said they don't fear Gambit. You see, Overpower gets himself a red card, not the gold card, so Diamond's going to be able to escape that one. But as it stands, that is a, a small victory. It lands in Diamond's pockets. You, you asked earlier if uh, the one, the legend, is back. The answer is not yet, I think. We'll have to see if uh, this additional gold, is, you know, maybe some, some Dragon's Rages now in the mid-game can help. I would say in, in terms of giving your teammates favors, giving up double buff to the mid laner at level four is probably the, the least favorable thing you could do to anyone. And I'm pretty sure General Solo Q would not be happy with you if you did that. General Solo Q, Nick's definitely not. No. This, is his, this is his LCS debut with Gambit. And he can't even say blame the jungler as it stands. <laughs> but truthfully, I think Gambit, once again, I really just want to go back to this. I do feel they should have put more emphasis on the towers, not head to head. They're going to try to go for uh, Dragon. Destiny is available here for Overpower, so Vision will be up, will allow them to engage. Rocket want this fight, they're going to go in. Oh, Vander does not manage to land the Zenith Blade. Gambit shakily step away from this one. Rocket coming out from every single angle right now. They're going to try and make a pick. They're going for overpower. Darian locks on towards him. Doesn't manage to pull the gold card. Finally, this time he does. Ace in the hole comes through, but overpower gets away. The Darian with the ultimate cannot chase. It keeps overpower away. They're going to all turn to Dragon. Yeah, now the fact that the Destiny is still available is very important. If overpower can recall and get back to sort of that mid lane close enough, he should be able to respond. Remember that Gambit is still 6,000 gold down. So even if they start a fight, they have to be careful. Lack of information for Gambit, they didn't realize Sullivan had gone back to base. They could have had a five on three of the Dragon. Instead, they hadn't got the wards, the vision, and the game. They back away, and that puts Rocket straight back in it. I actually think that was the right decision. Not only did they have no information to work with, as you've highlighted, without uh, deeper wards, 
the fact that Destiny had not been used and the assumption that the teleport was still available from Zazus, you know, regardless of his positioning, is something that Gambit needed to keep in mind. They can't run the risk of giving away even more kills and objectives. Rocket, a challenge for blue buff. I think Zazus is in a good place to uh, secure this one. Here comes Jankos with Spikes. I don't think he's going to have any problems there. It's actually Zazus that takes it as well. So, Rockat stealing away the jungle. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, they're actually Diamond is going to try and jump on towards Selva. Selva, though, just dodging in towards the bushes. Not too worried about that one. I don't think Diamond could win that fight anyway. Uh, Bloodthirster as well as Berserker's Greaves. That's a lot of life still and a lot of attack speed that Selva's already got built up. He also had both of his summoners, so it would have been a, a very brave play. <laughs> Darren's caught over power, but here comes Vanda. Goes in once again. Blade Surgeon across towards him. We're giving Overpower questions about the uh, aggression that maybe Darian's going to throw towards him. No in certain terms that he is the target, the fact that he has no summoner spells available is going to be a little bit of a worry for Overpower. It definitely is. Uh, Overpower also going with that Athena's and Holy Grail build. Uh, I was talking after the previous game to uh, some of the guys, and, and it is sort of the, the standard on Korean Twisted Fate, actually, going for that CDR mana regen. Zazus afraid of the Trinity Force Irelia. So with only a Blade of the Rune King, he's not looking for a deal, not looking for a fight. We've already seen it go, uh, you know, pear shape for him once this game. Well, we're wondering, you know, how many times have we said without Alex H to carry, Gambit are uh, looking in trouble. The fact that he's no longer there, somebody has to step up. And Darian, seemingly the one that's been very aggressive here. Of course, with a Nidalee in your team, he's simply going to be picking off targets, making them lower on hit points. And if Darian can manage to Blade Surge onto a target, it will take him low. The problem for Gambit now is because they are like, you know, six, 7,000 gold behind, they don't have the strongest of engages. You know, in order to pick a fight, I really at least have to dive in there. They don't have a Leona, they don't have a Gold Card, they don't have an Aatrox with Bloodwell passes. So in order to do it, they need to throw everything they have at a team. We'll see if they're gonna do it this fight because they don't have hard engage and they're just gonna rely on this poke. Diamond's going to have to try and go for the steal here. Throws a spear in, but he's too late. And now he's in all sorts of trouble. He's got to save that away. He does manage to have to flash out in the end there. Vanda taking some damage. The Cullin doing work on Diamond. And again, it's another gold advantage for Rocket. Rocket grabs himself the dragon. Zazzus gets caught up by Darren again. Maybe forced to flash over the wall. Oh, he's picked the fight. He's fancying it because Destiny comes out. Now Darian's in trouble. He's going to get picked off as the target. And Zazas takes himself the kill. Now Yankos, he's caught out. Diamond's going for this one. And he may well be able to take it. He's going to manage to turn it around. Yankos trying to use the ultimate. Oh, now he's in trouble. Selva's going to join the party. Flashes on towards him. Diamond's in trouble. He goes down. And Rocket continue to get kill after kill. And a tower as well. Thanks to catching Darian out. The Twisted Fate ultimate just allowing Zazas to turn the tide of that battle. Now, Rocket have got pressure in the top lane. They have pressure in the mid lane. Nick is doing the best he can to run away, but this is what we talked about. In these team fight situations, unless Rocket overcommit and get themselves in a poor position, the only thing Gambit has is poke. The only thing they have is poke and disengage from explosive cost. Oh. Darian, he wants a Selva, he wants a Vanda. Let's see if he can do it. He's going, he's teleported it in. He's going to nope. go aggressive, but it's not going to work out. Instead, he may well blind check this push and rock out already. He has to put the ward down and he will back away. Darian desperate to make plays here for his team and it is not working out in his favor. 300 second cooldown on that teleport. It was to a ward. Rocket sort of seen it coming, sort of, you know, got a sense of it happening and just peeled away to the river. They found the support of Overpower. They had stun lock potential, and unfortunately for Gambit, they now find themselves on the brink of a 10,000 gold deficit. They are four towns down. They haven't even got an outer turret of Rocket. When they've got such good range, and they've got such good ability to, you know, zone away opponents, because they only have poke, this is one of those situations where you've got this poke-themed composition. If you can't poke your opponents down, it is your only tool to make use of. And Rocket, I think if they play this one smart, they can play the map and, uh, you know, arrest even more control. Vanna going <laughs> aggressive on Darian there. He is uh, 007 James Bond right now, so maybe that's why he's starting to start that one off. But Sullivan, he's going to come up, get himself another chunk of CS, and quite happily keeping ahead of Genji, who has been fairly inactive so far. 0-2-0. Zero zero. Keep your eyes on Diamond. I mean, overall Gambit have good dive in the form of Diamond and Darian, but... There's no one to dive to anymore. They're all too strong. That's the case. And if you dive to Twisted Fate, he's going to be able to get a gold card down, going to be able to stun you up. 
if you dive in together, like we've seen previously with Irelia, Leeson, Gragas, or going in a small area, the power of Solar Flare just goes up even higher. So Zaza split pushing towards the bottom lane, the rest of Rocket group towards the top lane, and Destiny is available again. So if Zazus finds himself in a one-on-one -on -one situation, uh -oh. yeah, uh, Overpower's going to join him. Eddie takes a peek. Doesn't go around the corner. Diamond also taking a peek. Does get himself the ward down and the blue buff once again. Will be stolen away by Rocket. I think they're going to try and get involved in this one. Celeva doing a good job of keeping them away. There goes the blue buff this time. Crown. It does go across to Overpower. Well, Vanda looking to go aggressive here. They're feeling confident in Gambit's jungle. Yeah, well, he's got the license to kill. He's looking for an opportunity. Uh, previously, Darian, you know, was in a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Vanda's Leona, and because Vanda and, and the rest of Rocket are so far ahead, Darian didn't even want to go for an aura attack. Didn't even want to go in for that, uh, 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 you know, stun. So, so how it plays out. Good body snap from everything for safety. And Rocket now looking for the siege. They don't have the strongest of siege comps, but they do have pretty good wave clear with that Twisted Fate. Diamond. Is he going to follow it? Doesn't connect. And, and that's the problem. There's not enough initiation for Gambit. Well, while they're all trying to find all these picks, you can see Zazas, he's down the bottom lane, happily shoving a wave in towards that turret while the rest of Rocket keep them busy. They're rotating around and then they get problems in the mid lane. So they have to try and react to this one. Genji will clear this wave out. They're going to go aggressive. They're jumping on him. Darian manages to blade surge in there, but he's going to get the support. Destiny comes out. They're going to turn this fight around. He's going to be Genji as the focus target. He's going to get locked at once again. Half the 90 caliber events away. Zazas does finally get taken down with the blood well. Bring, bring him back to life. Diamond goes down. No, sorry, Darian goes down. The turret in all sorts of trouble as well. Well, Rockat just roll on through Gambit. Nick may finally take the first death for Gambit. Instead, it's going to be the turret again. So that was the mid lane and the bottom in a turret. And Rockat just roll on through. Six to zero now in turrets. Make it seven. Both of those, along with the two kills, there's no front line for Gambit to deal with. Even though Nick is landing some spears, there's nothing else he can offer. Zero, zero, zero on Nidalee at 25 minutes. His team simply isn't in a position where they can survive long enough to let the poke matter. Something that uh, Jap brought up during the North American playoff. When he seen the Nidalee get locked, he said, that's a great champion, it works well. When you have the peel and the zone control to get multiple spears down. He, th he theorized that unless you put something like a Thresh along with the Nidalee, there's not enough tools to keep your opponents away. There's nothing, there's not enough in your kit to slow them down, knock them away, prevent them getting to you. And if you can do that as Thresh, it allows you to spam multiple spears over the course of a fight. The reason I highlight Thresh specifically is because it was the second ban from Gambit. They had the opportunity, they had the possibility of taking him. This is a first pick Lee Sin that is one and five. It has not done a thing for him this game. Not worked out when he's up against Yankos, who had a terrible game in all honesty in game one up against Millennium, but he's 2-0-8 right now and having a fantastic match on Evelyn, which was banned away from him actually in game one. So he had the opportunity to go for it, but chose not to. It seems to be his best champion. Certainly worked out for him well in the spring split. So, Rockat in control. Dragon up in three seconds. Baron, of course, is available, and it's going to be vision for the Baron that is being taken away from Gambit. They're trying to get the wards in there, but quickly, Rockat come in and sweep everything away. So, with the position Rocket are in, and knowing that they have the engage, uh, there's, there's a sense of beautiful irony. When I believe at around 24, 25 minutes, Rocket lost the bottom inhibitor turret to Millennium. This is a complete role reversal of game, their first game of the day. Now they need to keep the pressure up. Diamond's looking for another steal. It didn't work last time. He's not even going to try it this time. And Rocket, I think, have got all the tools they need to either continue the split push game with Zazus or use those sweepers they've got and bait Gambit towards them. The only risk that Rocket has if they want to do a Baron bait is because Gambit have a heavy poke composition. That's actually a bad position for Rocket to be in. They don't want to be in the confined space of the Baron. So I think the smarter option is to get the wards in Gambit's jungle and play the siege game. Get on that mid inhibitor turret. Maybe try to force a fight around the exposed inhibitor in the bottom lane. Because Rocket sure as hell have enough of a lead to force the, the map. Now so far, 406 now got himself the death camp, of course, with that Lich Bane and a Thieves. Source Booty went very early on. Void Snap may well follow and then. You can pretty much say job done for Twisted Fate. Still at level 15, almost completing all of his items. Doing a great job, and honestly, he's had a pretty easy game so far. And we've, you know, seen obviously, of course, a couple of Twisted Fates so far today. This time around, Overpower using that Destiny to great success. Yankos Pink Warden off the Baron. That's going to clear out any last little bit of vision Gambit can put down. 
just out of range of Fairlight Ward. I want to go back to the you know opening of this game where 55% of the Lolly Sports vote was in favor of Gambit winning this matchup. You know, statistically, Rocket are the favorites. Statistically, coming into this game, Rocket were 5-1 up against Gambit with Alex. Gambit have had a roster swap. Gambit have uh, you know lost what many consider their main man, what I consider their main man, their main player. And they have not particularly inspired me this this game. They've got a composition that needed to be played somewhat differently, and now unfortunately in a, in a difficult place. Rocket just looking for an engagement. Look, every time they pull Gambit away, Zazus gets scared. It just gets more pressure elsewhere on the map. Look how confident the fact that Yankos was there. Damien desperately trying to keep Zazus away, but there's a two-level advantage between the two, and that's, that's going to be a problem for them. It's uh, obviously a CS gap as well, which is obviously where those levels come from as well, so kills and deaths have been gaining there. But you just saw Yankos, how confident he was, honestly, just running towards three, four members of Gambit, just poking down with his hate spikes rather than just throwing that ultimate down. This time around, they may have been caught out. Darman goes aggressive, but has to back away, and Yankos quite happily walks away. A little bit of damage in Yankos. Zazus uh, wants to fight with Darian. My fancy is this one. Darian this time has to back away, and Zazus will just regenerate all that health with that lifesteal. He's just going to gain off those minions, and problems continue for Gambit. So I'm going to you know, take a step back and look at the whole day's games and highlight that the games that have gotten to this stage where one team is seven, eight, nine, ten thousand gold ahead of their opponents has stalled out excessively. And this is a problem that the European region seems to have. Our teams just don't know how to press their large advantage. Zazus is trying to split push trying to pull people towards him. But what does that accomplish? I mean, what else has Rocket done? They they haven't gotten the, the inhibitor turrets elsewhere on the map. They haven't played a barrel a, a barren base. Hey, they ate an ace in the hole and now we might see a fight, but I think this is because Gamut are looking for one more than Rocket. To take a quote from Reckless after the All-Star. Oh, uh, Darian, you're caught. He's dead. So back to back Reckless. To quote. All -star. <laughs> he basically said, you know, up against SK Telecom, we simply, I didn't even have time to farm away. That's what it was, because they just applied so much pressure across the map, and actually Rocket was kind of sitting waiting for a pick. They really were. And, you know, Reckless, he didn't have time to farm away because he's used to his competition giving him 17 minutes to farm away. You know, Rocket, have, yes, they found a pick, got a kill on Darien, they're going to peel away from Baron and, and maybe this will work out, but I think at the end of the day, it's taken a very long time to get to Big Spear comes out, lands on Sullivan, but again, that's all. That's explosive cast forces overpower away, but Eddie's gonna get slowed down here. Solar Flare lands on towards him. Rocket continue to persist on Jason and Gambit. Dodge and weave out of all of that crowd control. But Zazas, he's just churning down. He's now in a 2 up 2v1. He's gonna have to back away, but the rest of Rocket, they're rotating down towards the bottom lane to help out Zazas. So those knockbacks and knockaways from Gambit are now on cooldown. So if Rocket do find themselves in another position where they can collapse on Gambit, it won't go as efficiently. Diamond hit multiple members of Dragon's Rage. Edward hit multiple members with Explosive Cast. And that was the only reason they didn't give up more kills off that Baron engage. 50% of the inhibitor's HP is down in that bottom lane. Rocket with Baron buff are going to think about CG. Destiny should be up shortly, but keep in mind, Silva is not there. He is just recalling. Got himself a little bit more resistances to survive those spears. We've seen one of them for 50% of his HP. Zazas has been down this bottom lane for a very long time. He's got himself uh, just shy of 2,400 gold. You can see, so he's cleaning his way. He is finally going to go back and buy. And you can see the, the gulf in gold. It's 4,000 gold between Darien and Zazas right now. If you actually look at the total gold uh, in the, the players, Zazas had not spent 2,400 up until this point. That is half of the total gold. Edward has earned this entire game. The disparity is is just massive. 5,000 gold difference in the mid lane. We're approaching 20,000 total gold. Now, Rocket, you have a massive lead. You, sh you, you need to learn or you need to make use of that because as it stands, you get the vibe that Rocket may be underestimating their lead. They may not know it's this drastic. I'm not sure. 7-0 into its 13 Well, their playstyle sure as <laughs> hell doesn't suggest <laughs> it. You've got to assume or have an inkling that, you know what, we've got a pretty big advantage here, buddy. Let's go for this one. Yankos comes around and simply just hits the inhibitor, takes a spear for the pleasure. And again, they step away. They're waiting for Vanden to pull the trigger, basically. So they're in a 3v3 in this bottom lane. There's a 2v2 in the top lane. If Gambit do commit, they've only got one real engage opportunity up from Diamond. Look at the explosive cost from Edward. He's either going to save a life 
or security kill. Salva is going to get inhibited. Like, it's just half-hearted. Gambit didn't have the full forces available to them, so they've lost the bottom inhibitor. Now super minions are going to control the map for them. That should be the opening rocket needs to push the rest of the towers down. Well, they're going to rotate, push down that middle wave. And all the rest of Overpower and Zazas keep on shoving in this middle wave. Gendra and Darien doing a good job of keeping them off the turret, but it's the middle one they need to worry about because three members of Rockout are pushing in there and they're going to be very close to sweeping around for that top. So the rest of Gambit are slightly closer now. So if an explosive cast is used effectively... Oh, they've caught Genja! They've gone in. Vando uses, pulls the trigger. It's Genja they focus on. He tanks the entire Gambit team and walks out to say, yeah, no problem, guys. Yankos is in trouble. He's going to get caught out, but that turret will fall. Zaza's keeping them at bay. The turret does not drop, actually. Son of a needed one last shot. There we go. They do take it down, but they, they certainly took a lot of time to do that. Very awkward engage from Rockout. That solar flare was committed to just Ed, uh, Genja, rather. It didn't actually even net them the kill. After that, the explosive cast from Edward was great. That really dispersed all of Rockout, and it reset the entire fight. So because Rocket had to spend so much time sort of re-entering the fight, Yankos went in 1v3, 1v4, got bursted down, he was forced out instantly. So overall, uh -oh, top lane. Rocket a little risky, and there's Zazas be Darien again. Yeah, it's a three-level difference now for Darien. You can see, of course, the gold cards in there. Nick throwing out spears, just trying to keep them at bay. But Zazas is a monster right now. 3, 1, 2, 308 CS, but the fact that he's hit level 18 already ahead of everyone else is a big problem for Gambit. It is a massive, massive problem. He's got a Bloodthirster to go along with his Blade of the Rune King and to work with the lifesteal from his uh, uh, W, the Bloodthirst Blood Price. So he's currently got 31% lifesteal. And when he's absorbing life, He's going to be grabbing an additional 70 through, 76 HP on every third strike, so it's going to be difficult to kill Zazus because he's just going to sustain tank through any damage you're putting down. Well, the rest of his team have been back, they've bought, and they're coming back to push in towards the rest of the inhibitors. Of course, the inhibitor turret was taken down in the last push. It means the inhibitor should follow through. Gambit, what are they going to do? Are they going to defend him? Are they going to back away to their Nexus turrets? Looks like they're going to want to fight this one, but I'm not sure it's a fight they're going to win. No, definitely not. There's the gold card. Edward's going to Edward's just going to go away. Solar Blade doesn't catch on towards him. Vanna continues to try and go towards it. The inhibitor turret in the top lane goes down as well. Nick taking all the pressure from Selva again, Rocker very haphazardly fighting that one. Zaza's having to tank everything through, but it forces the entire team away. Nexus turrets will fall, and Rocket, oh, they're not done yet because Gambit have all regenerated out of the fountain. They come back in towards it. Zaza's will get his blood well popped. Or will he? No, he won't. He's just going to lifesteal his way back. No problem there. Rocket just toying with their prey, but they're going to back out. And they decide not to finish. They definitely could have got their Nexus down had they all just committed a few more auto attacks. I have to or highlight. actually hit the right target, you know, all the same targets instead of five targets in one. I have to highlight Rocket's team fight calling does not seem to be the sharpest. They've, they've, that's two fights with a 20,000 gold lead that have been very, very sketchy. Now, you have to give some uh, credit to the fact that Gambit's ultimates are disrupted. Explosive cast Dragon's Rage does reset team fights by knocking people away. But in the same token, Rocket simply haven't all been on the same page. Whatever the cause, you can, you know, ask and, and think about yourself, theorize. But as it stands, Rocket are just in complete, complete control. When they do eventually decide to go for the Nexus, it is only a matter of time. You know, it's, yeah, I would say it's a worry for both of these teams. Obviously, Gambit yeah. clearly have issues here. They have problems. It didn't start off well for them. But Rocket themselves, you know, they lost to Millennium early on. They're having a rough game against a team that is effectively with a new member right now. Um, We'll see how that one works out for Niku, 0 0, zero. We can't argue that he's had a bad game or a good game, honestly. He's had zero impact on the game. Uninspiring. Uninspiring is the word I would use. But Gambit themselves, while they're trying to keep them at bay, oh, backdoor, overpower, hello, that's the base going down. Rocket get themselves a victory, ladies and gentlemen, but it was far from inspiring. On the scale of one to expect it, that was a minus three, as far as the backdoors were concerned. But you know what? Uh, at the end of the day, Rocket got themselves a very strong lead very early on. They never let it go. I do feel Gambit could have played that composition significantly differently. And the result may have been uh, very, very different. But at the end of the day, Rocket, they come out, they have a, a strong showing. They've definitely got to work on their, their closing ability. 80 plus percent kill participation for Yankos and Overpower this time around in this game. Um,
Vander, Vander Bond, I believe is uh, going to be his new name. Finished on 007 towards the end there. It was a strong victory for Rockout, but far from a convincing one. At 20, what do you say, 20, 21,000 towards the end there, gold lead. Massive advantage, 11 to zero in turrets. If anyone had Rocket, and I know Joe Miller actually has Rocket, has his team in the fantasy. They'll be laughing right now because he's playing you, actually, Trevor. Yeah, he's laughing. I'm not because my <laughs> team uh, is going to be more difficult. But I think for Rocket, the biggest takeaway from here individually, they matched up. I mean, those are straight head to head lanes, 1v1s, 2v2s. Two yep. They matched up with Gambit, who apparently were doing well coming into the split. They had better objective play, I feel, in the early game, early to mid game. But their team fight late with a massive advantage was questionable, and their ability to close was very questionable. So there are th some things that Rocket will have to take back to the drawing board and go, what went wrong? Why couldn't we close? What, what do we need to do to change getting over those hurdles? And honestly, I think Gambit, they either need to look at this game and think, okay, was this just a hiccup uh, after our practice? Is this a change in our style? Is this something we need to do? Or is it time to hit the alarm bell already? I would say from a, st a strategic standpoint, alarm bells have to be ringing. Because I really feel like that composition, from, from picks and bands going in, I was like, this is going to be great under towers. You put barrels down, you put traps down, you make Rockat's life so difficult. Because if you step somewhere, you get caught by a trap, you get caught by a barrel. And then you siege towers. They had the tools to do that, but not once did we see Gambit touch tower. And to do that, you need to win the lanes. And yeah. that's not something Gambit did but, during the spring split. But then, if you're not winning the 2v2 lanes, go for a lane swap. Go for the 2v1, go for 3v1. Hell, go for a 4v0. You know, force it. You've, you've got early time, you have wards to, to work with. Don't at level 1 walk solo into the river bush, lose both your summoners and get ganked 2 minutes later. I mean, that's just a... That is a rookie mistake. So let's take a quick overlook of the day. What, what do we make of it? Obviously, Fnatic lost to SK early on the opening game of the day. Sorry if I just spoiled that for you guys <laughs> at home. I know it was early uh, on and there was quite a few that may not have been able to catch that one. Good start by Fnatic, but SK again came back strong. So I was, I was going to say up until uh, the Millennium game, probably the, the Youngblood seemed to be doing very well. Mm. I think the league still feels quite competitive. Uh, almost all of our games have been very close, especially in the opening 20 to 30 minutes. You know, it's very tense, and uh, we've had a few long games. The scary thing for me is still closing. If you look at all of the games that have happened today, past 25 minutes, every single one of the teams has sort of floundered. Once you get to the, I'll, I'll go even more specific, once teams get to the inner turrets, in a turret in lane, they go, well, that one's too tough to game. I, I would argue SK actually finished pretty quick. Once they got the advantage, and bear in True. mind they were behind quite heavily in the lane They phase. were. So they held out, and that, that's because Fnatic couldn't close. Fnatic got mm. to the inner turrets, and they were in the lead, and they didn't know what to do. And then because Fnatic gave up some very key picks, SK went, well, now you've made a mistake. We'll punish Get Baron. Uh, we'll uh, punish Get Inhibitor, then punish Get Baron, then punish Finish. So that was you know, mistakes on Fnatic's side, but I do think e every single one of these teams has to go back and go, why on earth is it so hard to get past the inner turrets? Well, we'll get back to that in just a few moments because for now we're going to head over to Shox and Officio who are standing by with Vander Bond. <laughs> Thank you very much, D-Man. Indeed, joined by Vander. Finally, I got some points in the Fantasy League. By the way, <laughs> I knew it was a good choice to have Vander on my team. Um, Vander, talk me through this game. We saw some special things coming out and especially for you in lane versus Agragas. What did you make of that pick? So we played a few games in screams against Gragas and I think it's a really strong pick in lane. Like you could see one time on mid, uh, both me and Lucian couldn't kill him like with our full combo. So it's really tanky champion, safe with a stun. So he's really good in lane, but I think later in the game he doesn't provide as much as other supports. All right, well, in this game here, you played Leona, of course, you set up a lot of kills for your team. We're just going to do the replay already here, so if we pull it up on you guys' screen at home, it's the gang in the bottom lane where you actually engage the fight. TF will join them later on here once we start rolling the clip and start talking about this here. Who's actually making calls here and, and the situation? So, like, we all as a team knew we were ahead, and I said if I can get on Caitlyn, we just go, and everyone TPs. So it basically happened. And with the good engage on Caitlyn, uh, we couldn't lose the fight here. And this is the thing about you guys, because the coordination here, the teamwork, is beautiful. Like, it is spot on. Teleports down from TF, teleports down from Sasos as well, picks the right target, you kill them instantly. So the coordination is there. But once you go into the mid-late game, it seems you guys 
when it comes to rotating around the map and, and, and the shot calling decision making is lacking a little bit. How do you see it yourself? I mean, this game took a long time for you guys to close. How come? Yeah, so I think there were like two key points that we didn't finish as fast. Like, firstly, we went uh, too much for kills instead for towers. Like, we could use uh, two set fate better, and Nidali has no outpush. So I think we could go more for towers, but our aim was to split with Atrox and try to pick them. But they didn't really go anywhere, so this tactic didn't work. And then when we were grouping for Baron, like we didn't time our recalls uh, uh, right. So everyone was like recalling like one guy, then like five seconds someone else is recalling, then someone else. So it took some more time than it should. What are your aspirations for this season? Of course, in the spring split, made it to the semifinals of the playoffs with the two games only you've played today, given it's only two games. But what are your general aspirations? Well, I think like every team here, we want to go to World Championship and be top three. We lost against Millennium. I, like, they didn't do this well last split, but I knew they won't be easy to beat today. And yeah, I still hope we can manage to be top three. And I would actually just like to know, because there's a lot of talk about analysts, coaches here in Europe. Some teams don't have them, some teams got them. You guys have Veggie, he's your coach. Coach, he was your coach last season as well. How does this mean? How much does he mean for you guys, and how much does he help you? So he always helps us uh, preparing the pick and uh, ban fights, like he did it uh, also today. Unfortunately, now he is not living with us in the house. He will be back in like three weeks. And when he's in the house, he m firstly he makes sure that everything on screens go right, like. We are focused, we do what we have to do in the game. And then he helps us to analyze the replays, he prepares them, and that's pretty much it. Making life easier all around for you guys. Well, it has worked out here in this game. Congratulations, Vander. Looking forward to the rest of your games. For now, let's check back in with Demon and Quickshot at the desk for a wrap-up of today and a look at what we can expect tomorrow. Thank you very much, Shox. With five matches from our first day of this Super Week completed, let's check the standings. First up, of course, it is Millennium. They are at the top of the table in first place. Wasn't expecting that one myself. Two wins and zero losses. Next is Alliance and SK, who both tied in second place, both at one and zero. Yeah, after that, we do have Rockat in fourth position, sitting at one and one. And it's not really a surprise that there's a four-way tie for fifth, because of course, we do have to have a bunch of teams losing. Copenhagen Wolves, Fnatic Gambit, and the Super Hawk crew are all tied at zero wins, one loss. And tomorrow we will be continuing our Super Week with six more big games. We start the day with SK Gaming versus Gambit, and that will be followed by Copenhagen Wolves taking on Millennium, and then Alliance face the Super Hawk crew. Then SK Gaming will go up against the Copenhagen Wolves. Super Hawk crew will face Rocket, and will end the day with Alliance versus Fnatic. Those matches will all begin on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Obviously, not all of them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that will be 8 a.m. Pacific. In the meantime, for myself, Quick Shot, Shocks, Deficio, Joe, and the entire broadcast crew, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. picks up that kill, can they get any more? They've hooked in Freddy, but he's not the target that you need. And Peke in the meantime, doing tons of damage with Reckless now. SK Gaming pick up their first win of the season here against Fnatic. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Do you believe it? A lot of damage coming out. There's the last. Oh, oh Yankos followed him through. The Hulk comes in as well. And Yankos goes down. Definite improvement, but of course, over a lot more games. Wow. Than four overpower here. Gonna wow. go down. <laughs> Gun straight in, wild cards flung out there. This could be three in one. It will be Darius teleporting in, but it's at the death of himself. Oh, Bit of a poke, see what I can do. Wallace caught out of position, play into the box as wow, well. And the Hulk landed. Wallace gonna go down. Managing to stay alive and then turning it around. They're gonna go for shock. Wild Grub used. Kato gets himself one. Wicked is still very low. Wow. And there is the ultimate. 
Get, get, get me fat and he's GG. He's got Mega Inferno Bomb available. That's the only weapon to try and make this steal. Oh, they have it. no vision of it. They can see it's taken low. You can see it's 3,000 hit points. Right. 2,000 hit points. It's coming in. He's got oh! it. I don't believe that's just happened. How have they let it go through? Next, next, I'm maybe. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.